Welcome back for the final talk I'm going to be doing on trying to fit and parameterize and test and otherwise mess around with uh, copulas. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is the final two approaches, one of which is really quick and dirty and the other is what you should probably do if you just want to get some numbers out. So, first the kind of quick and dirty approach which is um, I think you could say it is su subject to a few theoretical challenges, requires quite a few heroic assumptions, but it's not a bad brute force alternative to maximum like likelihood estimation from a testing point of view. Um, as you know, if you're looking at something like Archimedean copulas and um, messing around with uh, dozens of density functions which each run too many lines, you, you might want to think about this as, as an alternative. Um, and that, uh, that approach is the chi-square test and it's uh, a test which can tell you what the best fit is and whether that fit is right, subject to some interesting assumptions. I mean, essentially the, the, the key assumption is that in each of the cells that you're testing, if your observations are wrong, at least they're normally distributed. So that's a pretty big assumption, but if you can live with that, um, it's not entirely terrible. So the starting point is essentially an empirically calculated copula density function, which sounds quite um, involved, but it's not actually that different to what we've already been dealing with. So if you look at the... Um, probability density function, the empirically calculated probability density function, based on the data that we played around with last time. Essentially, if you've got a combination of returns that you've seen, so for example, when x returned minus 17.7%, uh, sorry, when, when x returned uh, minus 5.4%, y returned minus 17.7%, you stick a number in that cell. And that number is going to be the number of observations, uh, 1 divided by the number of observations. So there are 10 observations here, 10 pairs of returns. And that means in each of those cells you get a value of 0.1. That, that is the observed probability for those return combinations. And you can kind of see that very roughly you've got a kind of um, an ellipsoid shape kind of running from the top left to the bottom right of, uh, of, of that table, showing the, the approximate positive calculation, uh, positive correlation you've got between those, between those observations. Now, if you then simply substitute those um, return values with, with f of x that we calculated before, then what you've essentially got there is an empirically calculated copula density function, which is quite nice. Because what that means is that if you work out what the value of a particular copula density function is for each of these cells, you can um, look at what the actual versus the expected is. So you compare the expected versus the observed portion of observations in each cell. You sum the squares of each cell, and the result is sigma say di squared, and that's got a chi-squared distribution with n minus p uh, degrees of freedom, where n is the number of cells, so in this case 100, and p is the number of copula parameters that you've got. So here you can say, well, um, when I calculate this statistic, first, when you're looking at that uh, sigma di squared, it's kind of like a, a sort of root mean squared type of thing, so the smaller that is, the better, obviously but you can usually get a better fit by adding more parameters. So that chi-squared statistic allows you to test whether um, a particular copula that you're using, which maybe has a high number of uh, uh, variables that you're, a high number of parameters that you're putting in, is actually genuinely better or not. So this is, um, you know, it, 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 it's an approach. Um, it, Chi-square tests have been used for worse things, um, and you know it's probably going to be easier for some distributions than maximum likelihood estimation. Just as an aside, um, 
you can, of course, calculate an empirical probability distribution function. So um, we look at the density function, if you, uh, both probability and copula. If you want to calculate an empirical uh, a distribution function, you use a very similar function to the one that was used before. f of xy is probability that xt is less than x and yt is less than y. And then rank them accordingly. And that gives this table here, which goes from zero in the uh, top left to a uh, point uh, 909 in the bottom right. And then if you put in the marginals, or rather replace the marginals with the individual distributions again, what you got there is an empirically calculated copula distribution function, which you know looks looks quite nice. So these are the approaches that I would use if I was going to mess around with copulas in, in Excel or or use a calculator or, or try to test people to see whether they actually had a good understanding of, of copulas or not. Um, and it also just helps give you some insights into uh, more black, black box methods, while well, either using them or even building them yourself. But if you really want to work with copulas and you really want to get the best fit that you can and compare different copulas, by far the easiest approach is to learn R and do it in there. R has um, a copula package um, which does a whole load of um, weird and wonderful things allowing you to um, fit them, parameterize them, gives you the likelihood functions, allows you to um, do simulations from them. I mean, it's, it is, um, if you use R, then you're no longer having to reinvent the wheel. Um, so it is, if, if you are going to use these things in anger, then I'd, I'd suggest taking a look at R first. And, and other people have written um, extensive guides on how to do this as well, if you need um, help rather than just going through the help documents in, in R. Um, I'll put a link to this one um, here in, in, in the comments. Um, but um, hopefully you don't feel that the previous talks I've done on this are completely wasted now I'm just sending you off to use another package and, and hopefully you've got a bit more understanding of at least what these packages are, are doing and what some of the um, maths underneath them uh, is. So that's it, the last in this mini-series of uh, talks on copulas and how to choose them, parameterize them, fit them, check the fit, and so on. I, I hope you found it useful. Um, there's some of the stuff that I wouldn't mind doing on, uh, on, on copulas, which I'll hopefully be able to do something on and hopefully do it within two years as well. Um, if there is anything else that you'd like me to cover, then, then do let me know uh, in, in the comments. Um, and I hope that you found all this useful. Thank you very much.